Hi guys and welcome to Little Wicket Railway, I'm Rob and in this video I'll show you how to connect multiple servo driver boards together to control more than 16 servos. This is a follow on video from my series on servo controls and if you haven't seen those then I'll put a link up there, it might be worth taking a look because what we do in this video will build on what we did in those videos. In those videos we used the PCA9685 servo driver board. Each servo driver board can take up to 16 servos. And the good thing about the PCA9685 is that you can link multiple boards together, up to 62 of them. And that gives you capacity to run almost a thousand servos off a single Arduino. Now I knew this was possible, but I hadn't actually tried it myself and a few people asked how I would go about doing it. So I've put together this short video to show you what you need to do in terms of the hardware and how to adapt the sketches to make sure everything works. As usual, I've broken it down into steps and they're listed as chapters in the notes below, so you can jump around by clicking on those as you need to. Just to warn you that this project does involve a small amount of soldering, and I'm not very good at soldering, but I managed it, so I'm sure you'll be fine. It does also involve some coding, but I've based it on the sketches that we used in the original series, so you can download those, and I will take you through the changes you need to make in order to get it to work with multiple boards. If you're finding these videos useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe, and remember to hit the notifications button so you'll be the first to know when new videos come out. Okay, let's get started. So in this first step, we need to solder a header onto the PCA9685 to connect the second board to. And the boards only come with the one input header, so we need to put the output header on ourselves, and that involves a bit of soldering. So let's start by chopping a block of six off this. These type of connections can be found on eBay, and they're pretty cheap. And that just fits onto the end here. So let's take our helping hand and clamp this in here so that we can get to the solder points. And we've already heated up our soldering iron, so now let's attach this first one. And once we've got one or two in place, we'll move the board around so we can get to the others. I'll fast forward the rest, but keep going until you've soldered all six terminals into place. So this is going to be our first board and we've got the terminals attached now to connect to our second board. So the next thing we need to do is address the second board and this is where you need to know a bit about binary. So you see in the top right hand corner you've got solder points labelled A0 to A5 and these are how you address the board. As it says on the board, open is a 0 and closed is a 1. So in binary, A0 is 1, A1 is 2, A2 is 4, A3 is 8, A4 is 16, and A5 is 32. The formula below the jumpers gives us the address of the board, so it's 1 plus the binary value. So for our first board, we leave all these open, that gives us a 0, plus the 1 gives us board 1. For board 2, we'll solder together jumpers on A0, so this will give us 1 plus 1, board 2. The same way if you wanted board 3 you just solder A1 because that gives us a 2 so 1 plus 2 equals 3. If you wanted the fourth board you solder A1 plus A0 that gives us 1 plus 2 plus the 1 equals 4 so that's the fourth board. If you wanted the twelfth board for example you'd solder A3 to give you 8, A1 to give you 2, A0 to give you a 1 and then add 1 on to make 12. So on our second board, we want that to be on address 1, so let's go ahead and solder A0 together. If you want more information on the PCA9685 servo driver board or how to link them together, then there's lots more information on the Adafruit website, and I've put the link in the description below. And here's the test setup that we're going to be using. So I've got the Arduino over here connected to the computer. That's attached to board one, just like we did in the servo tutorial. And that's got the three volt power supply. That's then connected via the output terminals to the second board. We've got a servo here connected to position zero on the first board and a servo here connected to position 15 on the second board. <laughs> 
So here's the calibration sketch from the servo tutorials and I've only really made one change and that's to this line here where I've put the address in for the board. So to communicate with our first board you need to put an address 0x40. To communicate with the second board it's 0x41 and the third board 0x42 etc. We want to communicate with the second board so I'm going to change that to 0x41 and we're going for servo number 15. So let's hit the upload button and get that sketch onto the board. So if I open up the serial monitor, in exactly the same way as in the other sketch, I'll put in 1200 and we can see our servo moves. I'll put in 1800 and again it moves again. So we were communicating there with the second board. So all our connections seem fine. So this is just a modified version of the servo driver sketch that we used in the previous tutorials and I've set this up to accommodate three boards with a maximum of 48 servos but you could repeat this for however many boards that you've got. So the first change I've made is to change the number of servos to 48 and then we need to separately address each of the boards we're using. So I've called them PWM 1, 2 and 3 and I've given them the addresses that we saw in the calibration sketch of 0x40, 0x41, 0x42. Then down here you need to initialize each of those boards separately. So we've got initialization of board 1, initialization of board 2 and then board 3. In this section here we've got the same as we had previously. So we've got the details of our throw and close position for each servo. So I've just got for test purposes servo 1, servo 2 and then servo 32 which would be in the position marked 15 on board 2. And just to make things clear I've put in here that it's on board 2 and in connection point 15. Then the last modification is for the loops. So each board needs its own loop. So Board 1 has a loop here where it goes through each of the positions on the board using a counter and then board 2 is here and you'll see the only change is that for some of the um, variables you need to add 16 places on. So I've added 16 there, 16 here, there, there, there and you need to make sure that you change it to be PWM2 and then for the third board, which we don't actually have connected, but just as an example, you would need to add on another 16. So that's 32 in total there, 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 there and there. And make sure you've addressed it as a PWM3. So let's get that uploaded and see whether it all works when we open JMRI. So let's open up Panel Pro and then before we do anything, let's check our connections. So let's go to Edit, Preferences, check the CMRI connection. So we're on the serial connection to COM8 for me. We've got the 9600 board rate and our node is address 1. So that's all looking good. We can come out of there. And now let's go to Tools, Tables, Turnouts, and we're going to create a couple of turnouts, one for each of the servos we've got. So on board 1, position one, we'll go to 1001, just like we did in the servo tutorial. And we'll call this servo board one position one and hit create. We're going to use one bit and steady state. Now we'll do exactly the same, but for our servo in position 32. So it's on the second board position 16. So let's hit create again, one bit steady state. And let's have a look and see whether this has worked. So there we go. Communication with board two is fine and communication with our original board is also good. And that's how you daisy chain PCA9685 boards together and get them working in JMRI. And you can repeat that process and extend the code for however many boards that you've got. So hopefully you found that useful and you've got your servo driver boards now nicely linked together and working with JMRI. If you found this useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.